Are you looking for a fun way to start off your STEM school year that will promote creativity, build community, and utilize resources from the outdoors? Welcome teachers to STEM Survival Camp. This unique experience will hook your students immediately to start off your school year. Grab your favorite camp shirt and let's get started. Now, I definitely think that STEM Survival Camp is a cute name, and you're probably wondering where in the world did this come from? I am definitely not one to be known as a survivalist, and I have no desire to be a survivalist, but I know that this was an exciting unit for my students. I had typically started off my STEM school years with digital citizenship lessons, which are still important and I still teach in my STEM space. However, it was the fall of 2020, which we know what that means, and I needed a unit that could, in a moment's notice, be taken online, and all my students I was teaching for the week had access to supplies. During the summer, my teacher, Honey, and I were obsessed about watching the show alone, and if you haven't watched the show alone, here's basically what it is. There are 10 nature survivalists who are experts in their field, and they are taken off to these extreme conditions to survive alone and they literally are alone they are taught how to use the cameras so there isn't a camera crew on the side telling them what to do they are all alone they're sent to these remote conditions and they have to survive off the land as long as possible so they are hunting they are building their shelters they are staying entertained if they are there for a long time now they get 10 items to bring with them of their choice and obviously a certain amount of clothing but it is so extreme and so entertaining and it was the inspiration for STEM Survival Camp. Now, if you don't know me by now, I am one who loves a good theme, and I think it can be actually very beneficial for students to plan thematic units that are tied to standards. This can really pump up the engagement. So not only were students entering STEM Survival Camp, we had to do a little bit of a room transformation. So luckily my teacher honey had some camping gear because I definitely don't own any of this stuff. Now let me paint the picture of this room transformation. I will link all of this on the show notes. So if you want to check out all the pictures of what STEM Survival Camp looks like in my classroom, definitely check that out. It'll be at naomimeredith.com slash episode four. In the corner of my classroom, I set up a little small tent that kids actually weren't allowed to go in. I told them that the zipper was broken and they believed me. So it was just their decoration. So I set up a little small tent. There was a little camping chair. I made a little campfire out of paper towel tubes and paper. And I actually keep the campfire every year. And I tell the kids that I've been keeping the fire warm for them. Nobody thinks that joke is funny except me. So I set up a little corner with this tent. There are signs around the classroom. There's a big sign made on that fake wooden paper that says, welcome to STEM survival camp. Then my classroom has one whole wall that is glass. So on the glass wall, I built these paper mountains that were cute and cartoony, just the cute little cartoon mountains. My wall also has sliding glass doors. So on the side that's connected to the library, I built a whole little RV camper out of paper. And then when the door slid open, it was like you were stepping into the RV. Not only did I decorate my room, I decorated myself. So I went on Amazon and bought a few camp shirts which was super fun. And then I also told the kids to get excited. So if they had any camp shirts from the summer, I had them wear them throughout the week and I would take their picture over by the little tent. And then it would go in our digital picture frame that I have up ever since I first started teaching. And this picture frame has STEM style. So when kids wear anything that connects to science, technology, engineering, and math, I will put their picture on the digital picture frame and then kids love seeing themselves from over the years and also making the connections as to what does their shirt demonstrate. Another fun thing we did during the STEM survival camp is I said, wear camo on Fridays. So we talked about what camo meant and then a lot of kids would come in and we would take the class picture with wearing their camo. So getting the kids excited and building that community, community with that short time I had with them was so much fun. 
Now you're probably wondering what each of the challenges were for each of the grade levels. Now, when I got started with STEM Survival Camp, I had known the kids already for a couple of years and I was already working up to having different challenges for each grade, grade level. If this is something that you want to do in your classroom, you can definitely combine challenges. So K1 can do the same, two, three, and four, five. I'm gonna go through what I did for each grade level. Now, all of these challenges had limited supplies and they had to be creative within constraints of those supplies. This wasn't an open-ended makerspace challenge either. So they were able to use all the materials that I supplied for them, some or none. And then each of these, exception for the fourth grade one, which will make sense in a second, each of these also gave them the opportunity to collect items from the outdoors. So once we got to that create phase, we had some rules about how to gather supplies when we are outside. Fifth grade's challenge was the build the shelter challenge so that they had to create a shelter that would withstand the elements. These were tiny shelters as well, not big enough for a kid. Um, they were given a few supplies from me. So just like the show alone, they were given their certain supplies and then anything that they found outdoors. This was a great chance for them to find creative sticks or rocks that could make their shelter even stronger. The elements that they had to test their shelter against was snow, which was glitter. Now, I'm the rare teacher who likes glitter. I don't mind a little bit of sparkle in my classroom. You might want to use something else, but I, I controlled the glitter and I was cool with it being on the floor because my room got, got a little bit of sass. Um, so we had the snow station, there was a water station, so students put their shelter in an empty bucket, and then the bucket next to it was filled with water and had a sponge, and they squeezed the sponge on top. And then we had the wind station where there was a box fan, and they could test it with different levels of the fan. So that was our build the shelter challenge. Fourth grade's challenge was the one that didn't necessarily use items from the outdoors, but it did teach them a survival skill. Theirs was create a hiking backpack. So after designing a thoughtful plan, they actually sewed their little tiny backpack that was small that could be used for their toys. And we did use real needles and thread to make that experience come to life. It was so cute how excited they were to have a little tiny working prototype type of their backpack. Third grade was the game from the land. So if you watch the show alone, the people who are there for a long time are bored out of their minds and they start creating games to play with themselves to stay entertained. Luckily, the kids had people to play their games with them, but using the few materials I gave them and anything they collected outdoors, they created a game that they could play. Some thought of some yard games that they had played during the summer and created a variation of that. Some were finding interesting rocks that could be a dice. They were looking for very cool shapes that had flat sides and they could write on the rock to create their dice. So it was pretty cool to see their creativity come to life in that way. Second grade's challenge was protect the food challenge. So they created a small prototype to keep the food safe from different kinds of animals in the environment. So we talked about that there are animals that climb, crawl, fly, and even thinking about whether how their food could be safe from those elements, but also easy enough for a human to get. So some kids created obstacle courses for the animals so that they couldn't get the food. Some created contraptions that kept the food safe. So this was a fun way to have them think about different animals that would be in the environment. First grade's challenge was the build a fishing pole challenge. This is a very common one, again, when you're watching alone. Almost all of the contestants create some sort of fishing rod. Once we got to the part of collecting items from outside, we talked about safety carrying sticks. We always carry our sticks to our side. We are always walking with our sticks. We use body measurements so the sticks weren't too long. So from a student's wrist to their elbow, that was the maximum length that a stick could be. And then they could collect five or less sticks. And I did give some items where they could connect the sticks together. And then there were little fish that I made ahead of time with paper that they could fish for and test their design. Kindergarten's challenge was cross the river challenge. So again, on this show alone, a lot of the contestants need to figure out a way to get across the river. Sometimes they want to build their shelter over there. A lot of times get other food. Maybe the weather is coming in or maybe they want to go hunt. So this was a cool way to experiment with the kindergartners about sinking and floating and things that actually stay in the water. They had little buckets 
that I filled with water on the last day, but they were able to experiment with different things they collected from outside. So we talked about maybe stepping stones could be a way to get across the water, maybe creating a little raft, maybe making a swinging rope. So they experimented with ways to cross the tiny river. Now this one at first was a little bit confusing for kindergarten. Some of them thought that they were actually crossing a river. And so <laughs> I had to make sure like to make it clear, you're not crossing the river. It's a small version of crossing the river. And they're so cute. And they, honestly, they love playing with the water. You could do the water part outside, depending on where your classroom is set up and if it's easy to get access to water. But this, all of these challenges are a great way to chat with your kids, get to know them, get excited about STEM. And of course, these are things that they could do at home as well. Luckily, I didn't actually have to go remote when this got started, but these are things that they could definitely get started with at home and continue to try. And oh, this is so popular after that fall 2020, it came back and it's coming back again. And kids get very, very excited about STEM Survival Camp and they're starting to collect their camp shirts to wear and bring in and show me all the things that they did over the summer. Even as a STEM teacher, you still can build community and excitement in your classroom and build relationships with your students. And this STEM survival camp unit is a great way to get started. And I'm going to link all of this in the show notes where you can see all of the pictures, the links to the shirts that I wore, and all of the lesson resources so you can get started with STEM survival camp in your classroom.